Cuff and Daryl DMC McDaniels. I've heard you speak a little bit about um, the power of positivity and, oh, yeah. and manifesting things to happen. Can you break down the science exactly. behind that a little bit? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was all make-believe for me. But look at those words right there. And I always tell kids and young people or anybody, when I was little, you into that corny make-believe bullshit. You're damn right. Because what I was making believe manifests itself in this real world. I was pretending to be the king of rock. When I walk the earth now, when I walk in the room, Diddy, you're like, hey, the king is here. They call me that. Um, devastated mic controlling, microphone master. I was visualizing and making believe I was something. I spoke it into existence. Every, every religion, religions is parallel. As a man thinketh, so is he. What you behold, you become. The power of life and death on the tongue. You know what I'm saying? When you look at that, I'm a living example that it works. I'm this little Catholic school kid, nerdy kid that wore glasses, that read comic books, that thought he had no power. And by me proclaiming, I wear my glasses so I can see. Because I said that now glasses are cool. <laughs> Prior to that, you was four eyes and you were spectacles. My whole life was, hey, four eyes, come here, huh? Did you see that? But after I said, D's for doing it all of the time. M's for rhymes, that is all mine. I said, cool, cool. D, C's for cool, cool ass can be rum and say, why you wear those glasses? So I can see. That's why I wear them. And it made it cool. I had all this adversity up against me, and I created these positive entities and characters just for me. But it manifests itself in this real world. That's powerful. And that's the beautiful thing. Well, I didn't go back to the comic book because of me. After I got out of rehab and I knew I had to go talk to adopted kids and foster kids, and I knew that I got to go every day that I'm not on a road tour and speaking anywhere, I go to high schools and middle schools and I talk to the kid, not as the 52-year-old DMC who conquered the world. I talk to him as a little 12-year-old kid, Daryl, that is like them. And they're like, you in the comic books and this and that and school is cool and this and that. But what I wanted to say was, now I go around the world utilizing the very thing, the very thing that I was able to do that I was prepared for that helped me with my career. I'll go into this meeting after my rehab and my therapy, and I go for a music meeting. And I go to meet Riggs Morales, who was Eminem's right-hand man up at Shady Records for the rise of that great kingdom. Shout out to Riggs and Eminem. And I was sitting down for a music meeting. And, and this is powerful. And check out what Riggs says. I sit down for the meeting, and Riggs goes, Yo, DMC, I'm usually very professional. I never fan out. But he used these words. But DMC, man, you was like my superhero growing up. <laughs> and this and that, and he just asked me a simple question. He said, what was it like when you was little? You know what I'm saying? Because he saw what I did in my career, but he wanted to know. What was it like when you was little? And I said, well, uh, I went to Catholic school, and all I did was read and draw comic books. And when I said read and draw comic books, he did this. <laughs> and then he started to glow. And the heavens opened up, and we just sat there for three hours, and we talked about comic books. And it was Rick who said, your DMC, you should do a comic book. And I said, nah, 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 nah I don't want to do a comic book. And he was like, why not? And this is true. I said, well, I don't want to be another rapper just because I got a hit record thinking I could do something else. Because rappers have a, ha a habit of trying to do something else and ruin other genres. And Rick said, no, don't do it as DMC, the mighty king of rock dynamic celebrity dude. Do it as little Daryl McDaniels, whose first love was comic books. And I still said no. But then he said this. He said, D, you can do everything you've always done with your music. You could do that and more in this form. And that's what got me. Kids could hold it in their hand. People could hold it in their hand. They can read. A lot of people would say, man, I wish I was alive in the old school era because it seemed like it was so in 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 um, inspirational and fun. Now you can go into that world with the comic book. So everything comes full circle. No matter, I am living, breathing proof that what Whatever it is that you're fighting up against, mental health, alcoholism, drug abuse, um, depression, suicidal thoughts, I am living, breathing proof that whatever it is, you can beat and defeat it. I'm getting the sign that uh, we got 10 minutes, so I'm going to ask a couple more questions, and, and then I'm going to open it up to, to the audience. Cool, uh, cool. You have a son. Yes, son, 22 years old now. The, does he want to follow in the, the musical footsteps, or what does he... He didn't, but in the last five years, last four years, he started to um, 
you know, make his own songs. Um, he has an Instagram and a Twitter. It's Prince of Rock 93. His name is D-Sun, D-S-O-N. But the beautiful thing about it, when he first wanted to get in music, he had all of this anxiety about doing it because his friends was pointing in his head, yo, your father's DMC. You got a lot to live up to this and that. So he was shook and he would cry and it was me and my wife told we would have to get him help and then one day we said DMC, D what the hell is going on with you he was like daddy do I have to live up to your your expect I said no he said I don't I said no you ain't got to do nothing you don't have to do it the way that I did it you don't have to talk about me you got to you want you to be who you are and that was just like a load off the off his shoulders his music is if I had to describe it his music is like LL Cool J meets Drake, and he's not doing the, the he's not doing the mumble rap thing. <laughs> he's not doing he don't curse in his music, and it's his generation. My, I, I think my son is bringing the missing link to what this generation doesn't do. What I mean by everything this generation is does is cool. But when you had a Run DMC record, you had so much versatility. When you had a PE record, you had so much versatility, subject, sounds, concepts, ideas, and images. It's just like now you pick up this uh, rap album, every record, all 12 records, is like the first record on the album and stuff like that. So my son, he's trying to find his own way, as is Jam Master Jay's son, TJ, and um, Jam Master Jason. His two sons are DJs, but they're creating their own lanes in their music. Do you guys listen to hip hop together? Does he like put you on to new artists? What's that relationship like? Yes, yes. I, I love young people because look, I'm 52 years old. He p puts me up on who's Little Yachty, who's YG. He keeps me well informed. But the funny thing about it, for many years, he really didn't want to um, check out. I'm not, he knows my records. He didn't want to go check out those old school cassette tapes. Of Grandmaster Fashion, the Furious Five, the Jazzy Five MCs, Cold Crush Four, Funky Four Plus One, and Shower. He was reluctant to do that. So what I did was I took my whole cassette pre-Rappers Delight, pre-recorded rap collection, and all my all of all of that stuff, all the stuff from cassette to CD, from CD to MP3, and I put it on his on his computer and stuff. Then I left it there, and for like two years, not a peep out of him. Then I think it was like last year, he says, yo, dad, man, when your mom went away that day, I was just staying in the house and I listened to all of that stuff. From the day. He said, yo, these dudes were incredible. He was like, the things that they did with the songs and the subject matter and their flows and stuff like that. So I think what he knows that he has to do is, I always tell him what um, Larry Smith, our first producer, um, Russell and Rick Rubin told us. I was a rap machine, that's all I did. Just right, right, right. They said, yo, everybody, anybody can rap, but could you make a record that's going to touch the world? So I put that in my son's head. And when you put that in a young person's head, they may have all the talent, they may have all the abilities and all of that, but what it does to the young people, it gives them encouragement. And encouragement is in this form. I had, all, I had, I had more rhymes than God can... Be, like, I would battle God. That's where I was at in my basement. Oh, on, on our record, Jam Master J... This was a record, the whole J-A-Y, all the letters of his name, cutting this guy, I wrote all of that because I was like, Jam Master J wanted to be Jazzy J. In hip hop, you can't be a biter. You can't be a copycat. I said, Jay, don't worry, I got you. You can't be Grandmaster, you can't be Grand Wizard, you can't be Cut Creator, you could be the Jam Master J. Oh, I love that. So I wrote this whole record. On that record, there's a line in there, and this is the power of positive thinking and visualization. On that line, I used to be in my basement pretending I'm DMC. I'm going to battle the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the Cold Crush Four, the Treacherous Three, and the Funky Four Plus One by myself. And I said this on this record, and this came true. I was like, whoa, I got to watch what I say. On that record, I said, we're live as can be, not singing the blues. I got to tell y'all all the good news. The good news is that there is a crew, not five, not four, not three, just two. Two MCs who are claiming the fame and all other things won't be the same because it's about time for a brand new group run DMC to put you up on a scoop. I spoke those words and the very next month, 
we fucking broke down every motherfucking wall. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, my last question before I open it up, and I know we don't have a lot of time, in memory of, of uh, Jam Master J. Yes, Jam Master uh, J. Speak a little bit about his impact, because I, all the DJs right now that tour all the musical festivals and, and who, are, who are doing that right. really owe a lot to Jay because yeah. he was the one-man band before. The first to play those huge audiences like that. Jay was the band. We used to open up for Marvin Gaye. We used to open up for ZZ Top. We used to open up for Parliament Funkadelic. We used to open up for Confunction, all the bands, and it was Jay up there by himself. Everybody from DJ Premier to Funk Master Flex to the amazing DJ Scratch to KG from Naughty by Nature to Terminator X from Public Enemy. They said running D was cool running around and jumping around, but their eyes was on Jay. He controlled the whole. We played Live Aid. We was the only rap group, that's big, to be allowed to step on stage at Live Aid. All the people gave and the poor got paid. Jam Master J wasn't using no playback. He was using Vonda. The wind was blowing. You could go look at the performance. The needles were skipping. Jam Master J, um, 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 all the DJs, all of those EDM DJs, they said, yeah, man, when we saw J, Fun Master Flex and scratching on, yo, get out the way, D. I'm trying to see what J is doing. J was the... Just as it, as Run DMC was, Jay was the physical manifestation of Flash, Theodore, Herc, Charlie Chase, DJ, all the DJs, DJ Jazzy Joe, all the DJs before us. Jay was the chosen representative to stand up in arenas and coliseums and stadiums and say this DJ thing is an art. It's not there. A lot of DJs now are running around pushing buttons. You're getting the money that should be going in the real DJ's pockets, and they just pushing buttons. Jay showed that we are legitimate. This, this DJ thing is an art form. What did Chuck D say on the record? Run DMC proved the band the DJ could be a band. Stand on his own feet. Stand on his own feet. Get you out your seat. Terminate and all of that. Jay not only was... The, the, the manifestation of the um, legitimacy of, of DJing as an art form for Run DMC. Jay was our style. Jay was our um, vibe. Jay was our aura. Because me and Run, you can find pictures online. Me and Run, before we put Jay in the group, me and Run was all over the place. We had I had on purple, Run had on green. We was all over the place. When we first, we made It's Like That in Suckum Seas, the record came out, the record got hot, and we ain't think about this earlier. Well, Run ain't think about this earlier. Record got hot, y'all need a DJ. Oh, shoot, Run was like, we didn't think about that. We went and got Jay. When we pulled up to Jay's house for the first show that he played with us, prior to that, did, did, I was wearing Pumas. I was wearing Pumas, and, and um, I was wearing PR Kedan suits. Run was wearing Adidas, and, and what else was out at the time? Um, 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 Fila. We was all over the place. When we pulled up, when Jay finally got into the group, we pulled up to Jay's house. True story, y'all. And Russell was telling us the whole time, you guys need stage clothes. You need wardrobe. We was like, okay, Russell, we'll figure it out, but we ain't wearing that crap. And the crap that we was talking about was what Flash and Man Bada and them was wearing. We ain't wearing that. But the first rappers had no rappers to look up to. So when Flash and them got in the showbiz, their idols was Parliament Funkadelic, the Rolling Stones, and Rick James. That's why they dressed like that. Flash and them was our idols before they made records in showbiz. When you saw Melly Mel and Flash live in the park before rap records, they dressed like the B-Boys and stuff like that. So make a long story short, we pull up to Jay's house. The front door opens. Imagine this scene. The front door opens. Jay steps out on his front porch. He got on a white and black Adidas. The, 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 the tongues are up in the air like tombstones. He got the strings around his neck. He got on black Lee jeans. He got on a black short sleeve stress shirt. He got on the black Adidas jacket. And he got on the black Godfather hat. And to top it off, he got the four speaker JVC box. And he steps out on that stage. 
And Russell looks up from the car window and says, dudes, that show, we beat him to the punch. That's our wardrobe. And that's why I run DMC dressed the way that we were. So Jay was the flavor and production rise. He was the gel that kept run DMC together. Rest in peace. But which one is the DJ is? I, we're out of time. We don't have time for the audience. I'm really sorry about that. But please give it up to Daryl McDaniels. DMC. Thank you. Thank you.